Hey guys, welcome to Outlaw Edge. So this morning I'm working on uh, the square body, trying to get the parts ready. Uh, there's a couple dents that need to be fixed before I can start priming all the rest of the parts for the unibody and get that ready. Uh, that needs, uh, you know, very little body work. And then I'm gonna go into the block sanding. And when I start doing the block sanding, it's just gonna be just a madhouse in here. It'll be prime block sand, prime block sand over and over until the body's flawless. But uh, there was an antenna hole here, and you could tell it wasn't stock on that, that uh, I'm not sure what you call this panel. If you guys know what this panel is called, leave the comment down below. But it, uh, it's a pa the panel that, you know, for the windshield wipers or whatever. Um, I blinked out. I can't remember what it's called. But uh, let me flip the camera around, and I'll show you what I'm doing right now. So I'm working on the square body Chevy pickup. And the driver, or uh, I'm sorry, the passenger door, you guys remember that one was toast. And today I'm doing the uh, cab corners and rockers. And I'm also working on trying to fix this uh, driver door. There's a whole bunch of Bondo in it. And when I say Bondo, I'm talking about Bondo brand Bondo, not body filler. Now we use body filler in the shop. Uh, a lot of professionals do. And the old style uh, Bondo is in my opinion, it's uh, it's something for like hobbyist or whatever, and it's also garbage. But uh, there's a long dent right here. Damn it, hold on a second. Sorry about that. There's a long dent right here. You can see all the circles I did. One here, one here, one here, and then one here. And there was a few people that asked about this dent right here. And uh, this is where the door handle is. You got your front part of your door handle your back part of your door handle. And what happens is you're holding on your door handle, you slam the door and on these old square bodies, watch what happens. It, it bends the door, it ends up creasing it right here, just like the old square bodies have that bad spot on the hood when you close the hood and it bends the hood. Well, this is another thing I see all the time when we do square bodies. And what happens is if you push right here, well, that needs to be shrank. So I need to tighten that up, that area up. If I push it back right here, It's oil canning really bad. And there's a really bad low spot right here. And the reason for that, uh, this caved in because when somebody's slamming the door on the square bodies, they're actually creasing this area right here. So there's a crease right here. So instead of doing what somebody else did and just fill it with Bondo, I'm gonna fix it. And what I'll do is I'll take my, I have this uh, Harbor Freight. This is that uh, stud welding gun. And there's the part number right there, 61433. Really like this. Um, it's not the best, I'll be honest, it's not the best one, but uh, it comes with a really crappy uh, puller, which I think was this one here. I didn't like it. So I made this one with the uh, vice grips. So I'll be using the vice grip puller to uh, weld the studs on the door. And how I'm gonna fix that is I'm gonna use the heat and a hammer and the studs and I'll pull them out and at the same time, I'm going to hammer, 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 and that's going to get this metal tightened up really tight. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to shrink that metal really tight as it pops out like this, and it'll pull it tight. And then uh, any, any spots that are high, I'll stick a piece of metal behind this or a dolly if I can get one in there, and I'll hammer that down as best I can with a pick hammer around that area and then a flat hammer. And I'll try to take that heat that's going to be from that that uh stud welder and i'll spread that out all the way to here and when i when i mean that i'm talking about hammering so that you're taking that dent that's pinpointed here and you're going to spread it out to here and by doing that you're shrinking that panel and keeping it so it's tight so it stops oil canning like that so let's see what we can do one of the things i wanted to say too is if you're doing this on the car remember a lot of the times that the inside of the car you know, especially on panels like this, they have that insulation on the inside and that stuff is flammable. It's like a real hard insulation, especially on the older cars, but you don't want to catch the car on fire or the door on fire. I've done it a million times, you know, not thinking about something you're in a hurry and these put out a lot of heat. So they'll, they'll glow red hot on this outside panel right here. And then on the inside, that insulation will just sit there and smolder. And what happened one night is uh, the shop I, I seen a bunch of smoke and stuff in there. I realized when I, I was doing a 54 Chevy and I realized the uh, door was starting to smolder. And if I wouldn't have caught that, we would have you know lost a shop. Um, we've already had one shop burned to the ground, so that's not good. 
but that's stuff that happens in this industry, you know, in this, uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff. Um, one of the other things is it's real easy to get your pool, like when you have the studs welded to the, uh, or your pins, these are your pins or your studs. And when you weld those to the door and you hook that puller on there and you're pulling up, you're taking that panel, sorry about the crappy camera work, you're taking that panel and you're stretching it up. Well, you don't want it to be pointed and pulled up. You just want it to go enough to where it pulls that dent out. And then if you're going a little bit too much past that dent, what happens, then you get a stretch the opposite way. So right now, if you have a dent that's pushed down and you're trying to pull it up, well, same thing. You pull it too much, then you have a reverse dent. So it's, you know, it's not, it's not con concave, it's convex after that. So then, then you're in trouble because that could be trying to shrink that down. You got to heat it and cool it and hammer it. And I mean, that's a whole different video right there, but, uh, you know, just be careful with that. So when you use the studs, so what I'm going to do or the pins, I'm going to take these, I'm gonna, these are the little bit bigger ones. Um, I have the smaller ones, but, uh, I don't really prefer those and they are, uh, what size are these ones? Yeah. Let me see the size on here. It's these are two millimeter. So I'm thinking that these are double that. So these are about four millimeter and these are, uh, you can buy these at Harbor Freight, Eastwood, wherever, all over the place. Sorry about the stupid ass camera work, bam. But, um, you know, you gotta be careful when you heat that up and you start pulling, you start hammering with that puller because you're gonna be using that slide hammer, pulling it up. And uh, the other thing it'll do is it'll rip these off. So I'm not gonna ramble on. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started with this and kind of show you guys uh, how I do it you know, the method that I use, that I've used for years, that works for me. Um, you Along the way, you'll learn other tricks where you'll be able to pick up little details or tricks that will work for you. And, uh, you know, doing sheet metal on these older cars is a lot easier. It's harder to move the metal because it's thicker. But on these new cars, I mean, you can get trouble really quick. You know, like if you have a flat hood or a flat door side like this, a big panel, and you want to do something and it's in the middle of that door or that hood or whatever, you know, you could very quickly warp that whole panel and it's really easy to do. I mean, I've done it before. So, and it takes a long time, a lot of hours to get it shrunk back to where it was and to get it where it's manageable. And I think that's where a lot of guys give up doing body work and not doing metal work because the metal work is hard to do. And it's really easy to just say, oh, screw it and put a bunch of Bondo on a panel and, and then sand it out. So we don't want to do that. So I'll go ahead and get everything set up. And then uh, I have a customer that's coming in right now. I gotta do a little bit of welding for him. And as soon as he leaves, I'll uh, finish up the rest of this, uh, this door here and we'll go from there. So right here, I pop this down. You can't really feel it too bad right there. But when you pop it down, I'm trying to figure out where I need to pull. The main thing is right there. Make sure you wear uh, safety glasses. Don't be a dumbass. <clears throat> I got the stud welder set up, plugged in, ready to go. <clears throat> and I got that, I believe it's a four millimeter pin, five millimeter, I'm not sure. Slide it in there like that. And I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, will it electrocute you because it's not grounded or whatever. It's grounded through the, uh, the cord. So, no, you can touch the end and whatever, you're not going to get electrocuted. Obviously, you don't want to stand in a puddle of water when you're doing it, but just pay attention and go slow and be careful. And then you're going to push down, <clears throat> pull the trigger, which is right here, or push the trigger. <laughs> Hello? Something's going on. Oh, I gotta clean this. It's 
So what happened is uh, I had to take the end of the uh, stud gun here and clean it up. This wasn't making a good connection. Just from sitting in the shop, it had like a moisture on it or whatever. Not moisture, but uh, you know, it started getting all nasty on the end of it from sitting. It was a little bit of corrosion. So as soon as I did that, I took that first stud and welded it in there and it worked good. So. And then I'm gonna do the other one right here. <clears throat> and it literally takes three seconds, you know, not even, probably not even three seconds. <sighs> Stick it on there and pull the trigger. And like I said, your trigger's right here. Not sure if you guys can see that. <clears throat> Come on. Trigger's right here. You're gonna push down, count the one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, maybe not even that long. You'll see it starting to turn the area around it red. Here we go. And then while it's kind of still hot, I should be pulling this out. But I'll do it with a hammer and pull you whatever. Smells like ass. All, all that burnt crap. And then right here where I just pulled this, there's a spot, hopefully you guys can see that. Kind of hard when you don't have a production crew following you around. <laughs> so I pulled this up here and now I'm gonna pull some tension on this and tap right here. as I'm pulling up. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm stretching up on this and I'm pushing down on it at the same time. So I'm only pulling the part up that's bent down, if that makes sense. So now I got one more pull right here. doing it just a little bit it's getting better though because uh before you would just touch it and it would do that now we need one more pull right there this low spot. If you push hard now, yeah, it's still doing a little bit. 
So I'm gonna let that cool and I'll cut these off first and grind it and see what it does from there. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's sleet coming down on the roof of the shop. It's uh, cold and half-ass raining, half-ass snowing, so it's just solid ice falling right now. So what I have right now is I took a body slapper, dolly, spoon, whatever the hell you guys want to call it. And I put a rag in there so I don't break the damn wind sh the glass uh, side window. And there's a brace behind here so I can't really get a dolly up in there. So what I'm doing right now is I got that slapper up against it and then I'm gonna use that to tap these uh, high spots down, tighten this up. Too much right there. <clears throat> man, oh man. Well, that thing kicked my ass. So I figured out that this was actually pinched too. There's a spot right in here that was like kind of tweaked. So that's why it was so hard. I, if you push hard, I mean, you can still get it to move a little bit. But at least it springs back now. So after heating and and then hammering and cooling and hammering dolly, and I had to put the windshield up and down a million times trying to get it. Beat from this side, put the windshield up, and then beat from this side, trying to get it, but it uh, turned out pretty good. And then, you know, so the next step is I'll get the whole door down to bare metal after I fix these uh, spots right here, and then get this thing in uh, primer and start doing the putty and stuff. I got to grind these, there's some sharp spots right here from uh, those pins. But anyways, I hope that uh, video helped you guys out. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. And uh, if you can please go check out our other channels, that's uh, Iron Outlaws on YouTube and Iron Horse Garage on YouTube and NZ Mopar Outlaw Customs on YouTube. And then, uh, you know, we'll see you on the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Later.